proteins are long chain molecules of amino acids. There might be several hundred amino acids in a particular protein chain. But rather than staying stretched out like a rubber band, in aqueous solution, a protein adopts a compact three dimensional shape, and representative examples are shown here. You can see that there's a diverse size and shape to these protein particles. And in spite of this diversity, it turns out that there are relatively few ways that alpha helices and beta sheets come together to bring about this three-dimensional structure. These are what are known as the patterns of protein folding. And in this webcast, what we really want to do is just to begin to take a look at some of the ways, the classification of how these elements of secondary structure fold in proteins. The way we get this information is from X-ray crystallography. And in order to determine a protein crystal structure, what's required is a single crystal, much like a grain of salt. The first work in this area began, well, about 1920 or so. And in the late 20s, when people were first learning how to grow single crystals of, of these protein polymers, you can see that they were uh, quite excited. I'll let you read these stories for yourself. But just to give you an idea, uh, people who were involved in this field were making comments like they're willing to give their eyes in order to, uh, to, to have those crystals that were really the, structure, the first structures that were produced by x-ray diffraction. And I'll also let you read over here where you can see some of the surprises that were found when the first protein structures were solved. It was quite surprising that proteins were these globular compact particles. The protein data bank is the repository of these protein structures that we have now available to us. And from the collection that are there, we can learn a remarkable amount of information about the diversity of, particle, of protein particles and how these uh, folded shapes come about. So really what we're talking about is tertiary structure. It's the packing of beta sheets and alpha helices. And, and, and that folding process produces a unique conformation that is, these globular compact particles, and they're stable in aqueous solution. What we're really interested in this class is to try to understand, to be able to look at a structure and examine it and try to determine where the active site f would be for, say, an enzyme or a receptor. And you'll see that there are actually some general uh, schemes that we can use in order to look at a protein particle or a protein fold and decode where the active site would be. What we're going to realize is that these elements of secondary structure pack together in just a few numbers of ways. And these are known as the domains of a protein. Domains of a protein are recognized as an individual entity of both structure and function. And we'll look at the different types of domains in this webcast. Basically, these are really modular units that nature has swapped over time from one uh, organism to another, and you see them recurring over and over again in different forms. So as an example, here's the structure of hemagglutin, the in influenza virus. And what you can see in this three-dimensional structure, the alpha helices are colored crimson, the yellow golden uh, beta sheets are shown as well. There's basically some in the middle of this, a domain of alpha helix. At the end, there's a mixed domain of alpha and beta structure. And at the other end, it's largely a beta structure. And so what we could do is zoom in and look at the individual sections, and we would find that there are domains of different types that we'll talk about on the next slide. So basically, it turns out that, as I was mentioning, we're going to recognize patterns of protein folding that we'll classify. There's a, it's called the so-called scoop classification scheme of proteins. And basically, almost all of protein folded structures are going to be able to be recognized as just one of four different types of domain classifications. So one of the things that we're going to learn in forming these uh, different domains is a, a very basic and simple principle about how these folded uh, elements of secondary structure pack together and fold. And so one of the simplest ideas is that uh, adjacency in sequence is going to lead to adjacency in packing. So for example, here's a sequence of a polypeptide chain. And notice that it's just a continuous sequence. There isn't a long stretch of sequence that's not involved in adjacent packing between a beta sheet, 
an alpha a beta strand, an alpha helix, which is represented by this cylindrical tube, and another beta strand. And, and so adjacency in sequence leads to adjacency in packing. And that's a simple idea, but it's borne out over and over again in the structures of folded proteins. All right, what are the different four classes of, of protein domains that come about? Well, there's what's called the mainly alpha domains. And as you can see in this uh, schematic here, basically there isn't any beta sheets. It's a way that alpha helices pack together uh, exclusively by themselves. There's also mixed alpha and beta domains, and you can see that there's a, actually we're looking on the, at the edge on ends of a tubular beta strand that forms actually a circular uh, kind of structure surrounded by alpha helices. The alpha helices pack against this uh, tube, the cylinder of beta strands or beta sheets, and uh, form the alpha, hel alpha and beta mixed domain structure. The other uh, main classification is that there are ways that beta sheets come together. Here we see a beta barrel, which is, again, a tubular kind of structure where the sheet has ended up wrapping around on itself to make a closed three-dimensional cylindrical object that has an interior to it um, that we'll take a look at later on. And then there are uh, basically what's, what's known as sort of domains with little secondary structure. We won't spend very much time with them. They're not such an important class that, uh, uh, and certainly not one that we want to be uh, examining in great detail. Most everything that we're interested in are, are going to fall into these three different categories here. Here you can see the um, what's a type of database that's based on enzyme catalysis, where protein structure and enzyme function has been uh, examined. And what you can see is that, by and large, those three categories, alpha and beta being the most prevalent, uh, form what uh, almost all of the different kinds of structures that are found in enzymes. So except for this small little slice here, virtually all of the enzymes adopt either one of these three main types, alpha, primary, uh, all alpha, all beta, or alpha and beta mixed domains. So you can see that we're going to cover an awful lot of the important kinds of structures just by considering these three different classification schemes.